Welcome to Oxford News This Week. I'm Terry Stiles alongside my co-anchor, Jim Hughes. Thanks for joining me again, Jim. As always, Terry. Thank you for joining us on Oxford News This Week. Uh, some of the things happening. Open alcohol downtown. The emergency ordinance for Oxford businesses and the Zach Line error kicks off. All that and more. The news begins right now. More news regarding the M24 construction project. This past weekend, southbound traffic was shifted onto the new northbound pavement between Broadway Street and Gateway in Lake Orion. This recent change will allow crews to continue the construction of the southbound lanes. This change will stay in effect until the M24 reconstruction project is completed in late fall. This change will now require traffic southbound to use the northbound side when traveling between Gateway Drive and Drainer Road. The northbound traffic will continue to be prohibited on 24 between Drainer and Gateway Drive. A recent welfare check in Oakland County uh, turned out to be more than deputies bargained for. The Oakland County Sheriff's Department responded to a welfare check when an 81-year-old homeowner contacted a neighbor seeking medical attention. However, the visit led to a discovery of the resident's 61-year-old deceased wife who appeared to have been dead for a few days. Reports, however, indicate the man currently is battling an onset of dementia, which had severely impacted his com competency as well as his decision making. Authorities are not uh, treating this as discovery as a homicide. The husband was transported to the local hospital for medical treatment. The home, however, has been infested with insects and has been condemned for poor living conditions. Terry? I think there was an Oxford resident, unfortunately. Um, the local Oxford High School students made headlines recently when he was named a semi-finalist for the National Merit Scholarship Program. Senior Seth Palmer was among 16,000 semi-finalists who will compete for some 7,600 scholarships worth more than $30 million. To be considered for a merit scholarship, semi-finalists must fulfill several requirements to advance to the final level. Over 90% of the semi-finalists Finalists are expected to attain finalist standing, and more than half will win a National Merit Scholarship, earning the Merit Scholarship title. Congratulations, Seth. You're definitely making the community of Oxford proud. Jim? In other news, the Oxford Downtown Development Authority is working on an application that would allow open alcohol consumption in parts of downtown. This is a direct correlation for the Governor Gretchen Whitmer's recent House bill that was signed which allows municipalities to apply for social district destinations from the state of Michigan. The social district would allow citizens to freely consume alcoholic beverages through downtown areas in Oxford in hopes to increase sales for restaurants as well as bars. OCTV's Terry Stiles spoke with the village police chief Mike Sowald who said it wouldn't have likely have an impact on his department as long as it's kept within the designated boundaries and people act appropriately and is considering adding foot patrol to the downtown area. He also said if it helps the businesses downtown, they are more w than willing to help. Terry? That's a good guys. Good news regarding several Oxford businesses that were impacted by the pa pandemic. Help is on the way. Those businesses in the area impacted negatively by the coronavirus have a new option available that will help to provide much needed relief. During a recent meeting, the Oxford Township Board of Trustees approved temporary uses, which includes approved outdoor dining services, mobile food vending units, and outdoor retail. Retail this, retail this ordinance came into the effect last week for the Oxford community. Important to note, to qualify for the application process, existing businesses are required to not be in violation of any township and cannot owe the township fees or property taxes. Jim? The Zach Line error of football kicked off this past weekend. To no surprise, it was a major success. Wildcats game versus rival Lake Orion was called off as it was reported two coaches tested positive for COVID-19. However, the school was able to rally behind the athletic director Jordan Ackerman, who was able to find a late opponent, Lance Cruz. 
The Wildcats controlled the game from the start to finish, coming away with a 34 to zip victory. The minimal fans allowed at the games this season, uh, they were able to work with the school to do the first live stream of the season. Way to go, Cats, and way to go, Coach Wine. Terry. Wow, that's really cool that they were, they had such a successful uh, game and that they were able to pull that off so quickly. It was, it turned around yeah. like within eight hours. Well, and I think it's cool that, I mean, Lake Orion actually realized that they had a problem and not proceeded. I mean, that yeah. does, that does yeah. kind of show that there are, uh, mm -hmm. you know, considerations being made. I mean, Oxford and Lake Orion, big rivalry, but mm -hmm. when it gets down to it, it's going to impact your health. I mean, I guess that's, mm -hmm. that's a good right. thing we have those safeguards. I mean, yeah. I would rather have them not play and be safe, but mm -hmm. I'm glad they found a, an opponent to play. I yeah, mean, it's just that was nice. weird I, times, man. It's like, you know, definitely weird times, I know. right? I know that they did play um, Oxford JV the night before, and I think it was that morning, I guess, and I'm, all teams must do it. They take temperatures and stuff before. Like we do when we get here to the studio. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, it is weird times. <laughs> and we'll get used to it. I, I don't want it to be our new I, normal. I hate, to, I, I hate, that, I hate that the new normal because yeah. it's not normal. Yeah. I, I think it should just be we're, we're adapting. We'll make it through. Right, exactly. We're but I mean, I'm glad that they I mean, they were able to say hey, yeah. the, their health was more important than yeah. the game. Yeah. And then yeah, we also beat Lance Cruz too. What the heck? You why know? not? Yeah. Poor Lance Cruz. <laughs> I think that was. What do they call those games? Just at, um, it wasn't they usually a, call that a Lions game. That's no, no. usually. I'm just I kidding. mean, it was it was a game that didn't count. What do they call those? I can't remember. Uh, scrimmage. Exhibition a scrimmage. Game. Exhibition scrimmage. scrimmage. Yeah, same thing. A drumming, <laughs> a beating, a shellacking. I'm sorry. Oh, poor Lance Cruz. Do they get our broadcast? Way to go, Oxford. <laughs> She's sticking out for them. Thanks for watching Oxford go. News this week, where we bring your news closer to home. Sometimes we <laughs> editorial a lot. Yes. Make sure to go out and wear a mask. We want to thank our friend behind the board who makes it all possible, switches the cables when we need her to do it. Thank you, Alex. Terry Styles, as yeah. always. Again, wear your mask. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week. Bye. You can't buy a best friend. You can love them, pet them, care for them, whether they want you to or not. You can take a picture or 50. You can bring them with you wherever you go. You can jump, yell, hide and go seek, play dress up or not, go for a walk or not. You can fly to the moon, travel the world, or just stay in bed. You can't buy a best friend like that. But you can adopt one. Cause we're connected. Ooh. We're connected. Ooh. Welcome in everyone. I'm Dave Suseski with your OCTV Sports Update. Unfortunate news regarding the Oxford Lake Orion rivalry game as it was canceled due to reports of two Lake Orion coaches testing positive for the COVID-19 virus. The announcement came late Thursday night on the eve of the big game. An opponent was found, however, to replace the Dragons as Lance Cruz North agreed to play the Wildcats in Wildcat Stadium. So the school was able to rally under athletic director Jordan Ackerman. Great job there to get a game for these boys. Now the game was the first in the Zach Line era and boy was it special under the Friday Night Lights. Oxford dominated from start to finish on all phases of the game. That's offense, special teams, and of course a shutout on defense to come away with a 34 to nothing victory. The JV Wildcat football team took a tough loss this past week when they matched up against the Dragons. However, there were some clear positives from the game as the Wildcat running game was extremely effective with the duo of Elijah Tabert and Cameron Jarrett. Jarrett was also a standout on defense for the Cats causing havoc all over the field. So lots to build on for them as they continue their season. The Oxford varsity soccer team won a thriller over, over rival Rochester that was one to nothing. The lone goal coming from Aiden Benson assisted by Zach Townsend. Picking up his consecutive shutout and goal was keeper Tristan Bennett. 
And the Falcons controlled field position throughout that match. However, as I mentioned, that lone goal coming late in the contest and Tristan Bennett standing strong. So nice victory for the Wildcats in soccer. That's it for OCTV Sports this week. Make sure you tune in every week for more Wildcat news and check out our latest episode of Behind the Fence Sports. That's Monday through Saturday at 7 p.m. Signing off until then, I'm Dave Ciseski. Go Cats!